It's time to focus on seniors with Helping Seniors TV. The television show designed to make you aware of senior issues and needs, as well as to acquaint you with the resources available to help you age in place and with dignity. Now, here's your host, Joe Steckler. I'm Joe Steckler, and welcome to Helping Seniors, the television arm of Helping Seniors of Brevard County. Our show is designed to provide you with information on how to develop your own aging and care plans. Our topic today is reverse mortgages. Joining me is Home Equity Retirement Specialist, Barbara McIntyre from Security One Lending. Welcome, Barbara. Hi, nice to be here. Thanks for having me. You're quite welcome. Actually, actually, viewer, it's, it's, it's my pleasure to have this lady with me today because having done over 350 of these shows over the last eight years, we have never done a show on reverse mortgages. Never. And that's amazing. And Barbara, just based on the information that you sent me and what you and I have talked about a little bit about before the show today, there is so much knowledge out there about reverse mortgages that I'm sure our viewers don't know and, like me, don't understand. Uh, sometimes finances are, are, are a hard thing to uh, to pin down. And for many years, we had a I had a, a financial uh, planner, a uh, funeral home director, mm-hmm. and a uh, elder law attorney. And we talked about estate planning, financial planning, and end of life planning. Mm-hmm. And we and we, we covered from all aspects. But I can see now where we really missed the boat in all that talking about finances and preparing for death and preparing for being able to uh, change what we're doing now so that we use some of these new products that are available Mm -hmm. to let us age with dignity. And that's what I want to talk about with you about. I want you to educate me and educate our viewers today. Well, it's my pleasure to do that. As a matter of fact, for years, this product was always called the reverse mortgage. And what we refer to it today is the new HECM. And that stands for Home Equity Conversion Mortgage. And we call it the new HECM because there are so many changes to this product, which is an FHA insured mortgage because statistically that we've realized that boomers and seniors fear more running out of their money in their lifetime than they even do dying. And so the FHA or HUD has put all kinds of new rules and regulations and different programs in place to really make this uh, cheaper uh, and more uh accessible program for people to use. And it's just changed dramatically. It's changed dramatically. But Barbara, I'm like a lot of our viewers, trying to get my my head around money being drawn from someplace mm-hmm. on something I own and how I can use that to help me get through a certain period in my life and not maybe not have something to leave for the children. And, and, and I think that's something you want to talk about today because uh, that's becoming a, more of an important thought. Uh, it, we have to take care of ourselves first. We do. We have to be able to, to live our life and have what we need to live health, healthy and have what the, the tools we need most of the time to age at home. People very much want to leave a legacy for their children. And over time, it's always the the thought has always been, well, we'll leave the house. And I think a big part of what I do is I try to bring the facts about this mortgage to the public and dispel the myths, because I would say the number one myth is that people think that their home is going to be owned by the bank or that they will not have title to their home and they won't be able to make decisions about their home, that their heirs won't inherit their home. And the next myth is that if the kids do get the home, there'll be no equity left in the house. And what we're seeing with all the rules that HUD has put into place, there is 
nine times out of 10, equity left in the home for the children to inherit. Okay, before we go ahead, I want, to ask, I want you to ask my first question. What is a home equity retirement specialist? What do you do? Well, I have a designation that I've spent a lot of time learning and better understanding what people are doing through all the phases of their retirement. Going into re retirement is, is the accumulation phase of retirement assets. And then when you retire, you end up in the distribution phase. Now you're not having an income. You're actually having to work with the funds you've put aside. So as a HERS, Home Equity Retirement Specialist, I've spent hours through programs studying to better understand what people are using in order to retire. And housing wealth, the actual home for most people, is one of their biggest assets. So using housing wealth as a strategic plan, not housing wealth to invest, but housing wealth strategically in all the different ways the, the home equity line of credit, the, the I'm sorry, the reverse mortgage gives them to use it, it, that's what I specialize in. One of the very first things that I picked up when you and I were talking prior to the start of the show and in the paperwork that you sent to me to read, mm -hmm. I realized the importance of anyone thinking about applying for a reverse mortgage. First of all, they've got to understand what they're doing. Absolutely. Secondly, they have to do the very, very best they can to get somebody that is going to put their interest ahead of other things. And I think that's sort of borne out by something you explained to me about five or six years ago when we had the uh, – uh, the uh, all the homes were being foreclosed on mm -hmm. and, and what's happening now. And I'm sure a lot of the people watching this show know exactly what you and I are talking about because they probably, well, some of them may have the same problem. And can you describe that problem for our viewers? I think we're talking about the the uh, HELOCs yes, that, can, the, that banks. the banks issued. A HELOC is a home equity line of credit. And back in 2002, when home values were very, very high, many people went to the bank and got this line of credit given to them. And what they didn't realize was that in the documents of those mortgage, those lines of credit, which people were drawing the funds out, it said that in 10 years, those mortgages were going to reset. And so for the last 10 years, they've been paying interest only payments. But what's happening now and will be happening over the next three or so years is billions of dollars in home equity lines of credit, HELOCs, from Wells Fargo, Bank of America, the, our local banks are resetting. And these borrowers are going to receive letters saying, you now have to make a principal and interest payment. So a payment that could have been 300 a month could very easily jump to something like 1200 because it's an amortized loan. And of course, these people are 10 years older, maybe fully in retirement, and that jump in a payment could be something that they may not be able not to do. They're for that. That's they right. for that. And this is a, that's a type of loan that if you don't make a payment, you're at risk of foreclosure. But I think that you, with the home equity conversion mortgage, there's a way to sort of alleviate the impact of that. Absolutely. If we have now are re really realizing home appreciation in the last couple of years, and even in some areas in Suntry homes, we saw a 12% appreciation because they're restabilizing from being so devalued. If a home has enough equity to take that home at that HELOC that the bank is resetting and use the reverse mortgage or HECM to pay off that resetting HELOC, now that borrower or homeowner won't have any payment at all that's required and they will no longer be at risk of foreclosure. He, reverse mortgages have no prepayment penalty. So if okay. someone is concerned about wanting to make payments on the loan, you certainly can, but you're never at risk of foreclosure because you're not required to make a payment. I liked one thing that uh, you talked to me about. <clears throat> and viewers, how many of you have long-term health care insurance? And how many of you are concerned that if you can't get long-term health care insurance, what can you do to help 
defray or pay for the cost of long-term care. And in talking to uh, Barbara about the home equity conversion mortgage, there's a, there's a neat product there that the more we know about it, I think the more people are going to be helped. And when you talk about that, help our viewers to understand how they are protected if they enter into this home equity more conversion more. Sure. The protections that go along with this product are because the product is an FHA insured loan. FHA is insuring to both the borrower and to the lenders who offer the loan that a mortgage insurance fund is going to guarantee that whatever the promises within the mortgage documents that are being made to the borrower or the lender are going to be fulfilled. The house is the only asset ever to be looked at for repayment, but if the house for some reason couldn't repay the loan, no other asset the homeowner has is required to be used. The use of a standby line of credit within the home equity conversion mortgage is a feature to this mortgage that is very unique. When we talk about long-term health care and a, a, a long-term health care policy that one may either not be able to afford or may not even be eligible to obtain, if a line of credit is, is attached to your home through the HECM, and 15 years from now, you have a health event and you want to have home health care, that is basically your insurance policy. And it's been sitting there waiting for you to use it all along. Yeah. So let's say somebody around the age of 60, they get a, uh, God, like when I bought the home term health care product for my wife and myself several years ago, mm -hmm. um, Mine is twice as much as hers was. I had some sin mm -hmm. significant health problems that were insurable, so I have to pay more for mine. But the cost of our long-term health care policy roughly for her is 2200 and for me it's roughly uh, $3,500, $3,700. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to pay that uh, because that covers assisted living, nursing home mm -hmm. care, and everything. But in thinking about Social Security, thinking about long-term health care, and thinking about most people want to stay in their homes, mm -hmm. the product that you and I are talking about today has another unique way of helping people do something that they would like very much to do. And that's enable you to stay in your home with assisted living care, in-home care. Uh, if you don't mind, could you use yourself mm -hmm. as a personal example to show people how as 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 a person that advocates and sells this product, mm -hmm. what you intend to do to prepare yourself in the event that you need someone to come into your home to help that, you for two or four hours a it day. It would be my pleasure. First off, the minimum age you have to be is 62 to okay. get a reverse mortgage. I'm turning 62. Oh, wait, wait a minute. You can't get a reverse mortgage if you're less than 62? Uh -uh. You have to be 62. Okay. That's something I didn't know. You probably didn't something know Something new. Okay. have to be 62, and I'm going to be 62 next month. So I'm telling You're not everybody. afraid to say your age. <laughs> <laughs> so my plan is I have a home here in Suntry, and it's I'm very blessed my home is paid for. I intend to put a standby line of credit on my home. And because I don't, I'm, I love what I do, I'm still working and I intend to do so for a very long time because I, it's a, a mission to bring this information to Brevard County seniors. You explain it very well. Thank you. And I've been doing it 11 years, so I've had a lot of practice. <laughs> but I intend to put this line of credit on my home and I am going to utilize an interest rate that allows me to have what they call in the industry, no load, meaning I'm not gonna pay any fees to actually put the line of credit on my home. Within this mortgage, it has a unique fit feature that the line of credit ha has a growth, it has the ability to give increasing access to more and more equity over the years. The assumption being I'm getting older, so it's going to free up more equity and the house is appreciating. So that's not going to be a problem. 
So this growth feature within the line of credit is compounding. So it's going to be probably in the next 15 years, what I have available to me today will double or more than that in 15 years. I cannot get long-term health care insurance due to a health issue, but I know that I want to age at home. And in 15 years or whatever, if I become ill and I need health services and I want to stay at home, I'm going to be able to use that line of credit as my long-term health care policy. I know you give seminars. I do. And I know you speak to different groups. Have you ever, do you use yourself as an example to show people what can happen? And if you do, and if so, have you had people come back and say, I like the way you explained that. I want to try and do the same thing myself. Absolutely. And, and what I'm doing, I'm finding that I'm doing more and more now because the uses of the line of credit, specifically the line of credit within this mortgage, I work a lot bringing the information to financial advisors and the advisors that are working with the boomers and seniors that are trying to make their money last through their retirement years. Uses of this mortgage are things like taking your, deferring your social security at 62 by using for the- for the Explain that a little bit. When you take your social security, you're allowed to take social security benefit when you turn 62, but right. you don't get 100% of your social security benefit. So a lot of people just wait. A lot of people wait until they're 66, which is the current age that you can get 100%. And if you wait until you're 70, you can even get a higher than 100% of your benefit. Some people at 62 have to retire. Maybe they have a health issue. Maybe the, they were doing a type of job that doesn't allow them to keep working. It's too, you know, they're a roofer for goodness sake, and they want to get off the roof. If you have a house and you put a line of credit that you can draw out of your home's equity, equity for those couple of years between 62 and 66, then you can file for your social security at 66 and get a hundred percent of your benefit. But you still get the social you you get equally that social security benefit for those four years. Yes, you can draw it out. So, so but that's based on a presumption that with the change in uh, longer living and mm. uh, in fact, children starting to realize that that mom and dad are not going to be able to leave them the house and right. all this wealth that they might have been able to do years ago. And we work on the assumption that the markets are going to be kind of fair. Mm -hmm. You have in life you have to make some assumptions. You do. You have to make some assumptions. I agree. So why not try to make an assumption that could treat you the most kindly? So I see this uh, type of mortgage you're talking about as giving me that the money that I might have needed from sixty two to sixty six and then at 66, I get the larger Social Security payment. And, and at worst case, the cost of all that is only going to come out of what's finally left in the annuity when I die and the children get what's left. Absolutely. When when the house is, is you're done with the house, you've either both passed away or you've decided to move because you own the house, you're never off title. So it's always the borrower's decision. Whatever has been used, if you have a line of credit, that is just equity that's available to you. You only owe what you've actually used and drawn, plus the interest attached. That's paid off. And the retained equity in the home, everything above the, the debt is the borrowers or the heirs of the borrowers. So, you know. Well, okay, let's talk, let's talk about this aspect mm -hmm. of it. What are some of the fears that I, as a potential purchaser of the product, what are some of the potential fears I should have with regard to uh, what could cause me to get into trouble? In other words, uh, what kind of payments very, do I do? What very do I do? good question. There are only three things that call a reverse mortgage or a uh, HECM due and payable. Not living in the house is your primary residence. You have to it has to be your primary residence and you need to live there. Don't have to stay there 12 months out of the year, but it has to be your primary residence. 
the two biggest factors that people need to know and consider very seriously is their willingness and capacity to continue to pay taxes and insurance on the home. Over the years, there have been times, and I've said before how much this product has changed in the last 11 years. When borrowers took all the funds out of every benefit right at day one when they closed a reverse mortgage, there was a pretty small percentage, but any percentage was too much, of people that then found they did not have the resources to keep paying their property taxes and homeowners insurance. Because the lender is going to look to that house for repayment one day, if it does not have taxes paid, then what happens to anybody's home? They Four sell close. it on the courthouse sl- steps if you don't pay your taxes. And that's what happened six, seven years ago. And if somebody doesn't have homeowners and it burns to the ground, who's going to rebuild it? So the lenders will foreclose on a reverse mortgage if the borrower fails to maintain taxes and insurance. That is a risk to the borrower. So as an originator, someone like me that goes out and sits at at someone's kitchen table and preferably with their family or anyone who advises them, we look at the whole picture. It's not just putting the reverse mortgage in place. It's once you have it, are you going to be able to continue to pay these items that are required to be paid? This mortgage is not for everyone. It's not a one size fits all, but I have to say all the changes that have occurred over the years make it more likely to fit many scenarios than less likely. Anytime I talk about something like this, I I, I, I get concerned about uh, what changes can the bank pull on me to make it difficult for me to uh, continue to do what I've agreed to do? Uh, Mm -hmm. Having said that, has HUD or the government put some things in place to control what the banks can do to you as a purchaser of this product? Well, one one thing they've done, I'm going to say two things. One is the mortgage documents attached with the reverse mortgage, they are FHA loan documents. And once that loan is signed, there is nothing that can be changed. There is no going back and changing the rules. However, HUD puts out periodically what we call mortgagee letters related to all kinds of FHA insured mortgages. We've recently gotten some new mortgagee letters which have helped lenders now be able to put in place a kind of a litmus test for determining if borrowers who want to have the reverse mortgage will be able to continue paying taxes and insurance. And so now there's some rules going into place and it happens April 27th. These, this new, these new rules take effect. And what it will do is it's not going to deny borrowers, but it's going to say, if you show a, a not enough income, we're going to take some of your benefit and we're going to, to hold it back so that when your taxes and insurance are due, we can send it to you to pay those. So the lenders are starting, I should say, it does make sense because we don't want to set seniors up to fail. Nobody wants to foreclose on grandma ever. (laughs) So what they're doing is they're putting some some situations in place to be more protective. Let me share an example from my own experience and Mm -hmm. make a comment on this. We talked about uh, using this uh, home equity line of credit Mm -hmm. to uh, pay for... uh, in home care, right? A good example. Let's say, if you think, if you maybe have a hundred thousand dollar line of credit is available to you, and uh, you're not going, you're never going to qualify for Medicaid. You're going to have to pay all these expenses out of your pocket. Assisted living facilities cost roughly average now five thousand a month, mm-hmm. but there are several organizations that we work with that send somebody into a home, and I know one group can send somebody in, they can fix some breakfast, uh, tidy the house up, uh, get them, help them get dressed, uh, make sure they're taking their medications. Um, and they charge them $32 for a block service of two hours. And we had a one, one family where they had to do that twice a day. So roughly for $2,200 a month, 
Right. They were they were unable to stay in their own home. But if you have a hundred thousand dollar line of credit and you're not and you're never going to have to pay that except when you die, that can last a long time. Absolutely. And with the line of credit, you just draw the funds when you need it. So if you want to draw. $5,000 and have it in an account so that you can pay that home health agency as they're providing those services. Hey, the roof has a leak. I need a little extra money to fix the roof. That's a common thing. I need thing. A, the that car is broke something down. That I mean, all the time. You, and the, so the security and the, the comfort that people get of having that line of credit, it, it's, it's just. You have to do a couple of things. You have yes. to convince the parents that it's in their best interest, and actually it's in the best interest of their children because it prevents them from becoming a burden on the children. Then the children have to realize that by enabling their parents to do what's right for them, it makes their own life easier in terms of the care care situation. So it's just a win situation. Right. We're almost out of time. What else would you say, Barbara? Knowledge is power. That's what I would say. People need to know about this product and and dispel the myths and know the facts. Well, we've got the radio show, and we'll certainly have you on the radio show. And uh, I I will make sure Kay gets a hold of you so we have a three or four hundred word column for our newsletter because I think this is information most people need to know. I agree. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for being here. Thank you for for watching today and uh, this issue of Helping Seniors.